Cisco's revamped New York office is packed with technology. There's tech that tracks. There's 5,000 individual data points that are being constantly collected and harvested in this facility. And tech used for collaboration. Is there any space in this office that doesn't have a camera? No, there isn't. Cisco's smart office is both a showcase of the company's technology and an example of how it sees the workplace evolving. So how does it look? And more importantly, how does it work? I took a tour with the project's leaders and popped into a few meetings to find out. <laughs> Cisco's 59,000 square foot office sits in Midtown Manhattan, in one Penn Plaza, exactly where it's been for the last 17 years. But in the last two, it's undergone an $18 million tech-driven redesign. This is one of the few projects where technology was really at the very beginning and pervasive throughout the entire process. In this space, the screens, cameras, and sensors came before the lighting and furniture, which was a new process for both Gensler and Cisco. We really think technology is going to be at the heart of how people design buildings moving forward. So we started it with that layer. To see this tech, all you have to do is look up. The ceiling is littered with tech, each of which doing more than it might appear. So it's hard to miss this camera. Yeah. What is this camera doing? Actually, this is a Meraki security camera. And obviously, it's recording people coming in and out of the floor. But it's also got a tripwire built in. We can actually count people as they come in and decrement as they leave. So at any given time, we know the, the overall occupancy of the floor. But to know where people are after they enter the office, Cisco uses its wireless access points, like this one. It's actually tra tracking mobile devices as a proxy for understanding occupancy of space and people. But it's also tracking air quality, temperature, and humidity. Is it tracking my mobile device right yeah, now? Yeah, it's, so it's it knows... tracking a mobile device. It okay. doesn't know it's you, but it knows there are two mobile devices here because I have one in my pocket as well. Leave the hallway to enter a meeting, and the cameras used to connect employees on video call then pick up the count, tracking the number of participants in the room. While employees may be anonymous, this type of tracking isn't common. Just 1% of companies in a 2022 Gartner poll have sensors that track foot traffic. 43% of companies say they aren't tracking on-site attendance at all. Are employees at all concerned about the tracking that's possible in an office where cameras count the number of bodies in the space? No, I, I don't believe they are. And the reason for that is at Cisco, we don't have a set number of days that we expect employees to be in the office. I think if we had different expectations around being in the office, it may feel a little bit different. But because we don't, I think they understand that those insights allow us to make the space the best that it can be for them. Still, these are Cisco products. Other companies that purchase these systems could use them for more specific tracking. Or they could do as Cisco does and feed the data here for employees to see. Really, what we have here is the great ability to show employees space availability. Red is obviously a space that is booked and being used right now, or uh, amber is a space that's booked and not being used, and green is an available space. Let's find a space that we can go yeah, to. Yeah, so, so here's a space right here. Let's, we'll go to this space. Okay. Let's hold that, and that's going to give us four minutes to get over there. Four minutes because in this office, space is meant to be shared. So rooms like the ones lining this hall aren't bookable. The red and green lights are your signal. See, this is our room that we're going to use. Yep. All right. These ad hoc spaces represent one of the biggest changes to Cisco's space, how it's balanced. Take a look at Cisco's floor plan. These spaces are what Cisco considers individual workspaces. These spaces are for teams. In the past, our uh, building was set up where 70% of the space was targeted toward individuals and 30% of the space was targeted toward teams, and we flipped that. That resulted in the 90 collaboration spaces seen here and left just 50 individual desks. I think this is a new era, and I think that when you want to sit by yourself and get work done, you may not choose the office to do that. There are actually about 1,700 employees assigned to this office, but Cisco doesn't expect that they'll all be in on the same day. With hybrid here to stay, we're seeing so much more emphasis on um, amenity spaces, collaboration spaces. People are coming in to be with other people, um, the things that they can't do when they're working at home. Things like brainstorming on a whiteboard or meeting in a 14-person room like this one are now the focus. So what's really interesting about this space is how the space design, how the furnishings and the technology all come together. They come together because Cisco designed the table to work specifically with the camera at the other end, from the placement of the microphones to this matte finish, which helps reflect light up onto the faces of the table. Most noticeable, though, is the table's tapered shape. 
we shape the table to make sure everybody has a line of sight on the display, right, and can see content. And we also have make sure that people that are remote, that are joining us, actually have line of sight of everybody at the table. Right? right, because that person all the way at the end is much further to the right than I am, so they should be able to see exactly. every single face down the row. That shape and the exclusion of chairs on the screen side is pervasive in Cisco's space because it says 98% of its meetings will have a remote participant. So who is this conference room designed for? Is it designed for the people who are here at this table or is it designed for the people who are signing in remotely? When, when we think about designing collaboration spaces like this, we spend as much time, if not more, about worrying about the remote participant. We want to make sure there's absolute digital equality. Digital equality. That's an idea that Cisco stressed and something it thinks its hybrid workforce needs. Something that we have all experienced is sometimes you're in a meeting and you're having a hard time breaking in. And especially if you happen to be the only one in the office or the only one working remotely. And here's where the camera can help bring people, or at least their faces, closer. I tested it with colleagues who work in two separate offices. Are you seeing this, this full room? Are you seeing this whole table? No, I'm seeing four chairs. I, same, I just sent you a screen grab. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's really, you're really only seeing like my, my side of the room. There is an argument to be made that with all of Cisco's technology and the ability to make every space into a hybrid meeting space, that the office isn't really needed at all. What would you say to that? Well, I think that at the end of the day, people will want to come together, but they're going to come together for different reasons. But for those who'd rather stay home, the tech is here to support that. And that's an example that other companies may follow. So do you expect other companies you work with to want to do tech first, design second? Absolutely. I mean, so many of our clients are interested in seeing this space because of how this was built. I think anyone that's looking to build a new space is going to think this way.